another episode of Let's Eat Orlando. I am Amy Drew Thompson from the Orlando Sentinel and other places before that. And my co-host here is... It's Biggie from Deli Fresh Threads. How's everyone doing today? Uh, Amy, what are we talking Amy Drew, what are we talking about today? Today, we're going to talk a little bit about sushi. Okay. Uh, not in general, but Sato, which is, you know, a million people's favorites uh, in Baldwin Park. And I had not been there in quite some time because as we discussed, I don't get to go back to a lot of the places I like that often because I am like a shark. I can't stop swimming. I got to keep moving. And a lot of that is also because of the fact that like when you, when you have to write articles, how many like articles are you supposed to write like during the course of the week of like new places and stuff like that? Like what is it usually something? Of... I write on average four minimum a week. I would say. And that doesn't count news. Yeah. Like breaking things. And it doesn't really count the larger, what they call enterprise reporting stories. Got it. So um, I write a lot, but like, just let's look at it this way. 52 reviews a year. That's just reviews. That doesn't count anything else I do. That's yeah. one every week of the year. 52 calendar columns with a couple of exceptions, you know, when they do the, Spooky Awards or the the Twinkly Awards or or Matt Palm's Theater Preview, you know, like everybody else gets a break when I do uh, the foodies. But for the most part, a calendar column every week. It's a lot of stuff. This is really boring. You better edit this. No, no, it's not boring. I think people need to understand this, though, because that means it's 52 of those that you're doing plus anything new that are topic wise. Cause that's one's review. And then one's also, you know, yeah, like if no, there's a theme or you know, a holiday week. or something yeah. like that. The cooking section every week is on Thursday. It always has two pieces by me. One would be like the centerpiece, which could be a bigger recipe story. It could be about, um, you know, one Chilean food or empanadas or, you know, any grilled cheese. I don't know. It could be about anything. Yeah. Um, Peanut butter and jelly. It could be, it could be about any topic like that. Really, it could be something that's tied into the news. It could be something that's tied into a food holiday or the season. It could be, you know, an Easter recipe or a Hanukkah recipe or it could be anything. But there is one a cluster review. That's two of my stories a week. Then there's always a calendar column on Friday. And then there's other stuff during the week too. So, and we'll go back so that way I can circle back to lead you back. You were talking about Sato Sushi and yes. that you got to go there. And it's not one of those things you get to do, go back to often, uh, back to a restaurant, some of the restaurants after you've eaten there since you've got to always eat somewhere new. Well, the funny thing about it is that I had a friend coming to town and he wanted to have lunch and he was going to have his daughter with him and her boyfriend and he, but they had a thing to do. They were flying in, they were flying out. They had I love how you don't want to name drop and I'm not going to, <laughs> but I love how you don't want to name drop who these people are. Uh, well, but I did that's in fine. the story. I did in the story because it's really not about them. I understand <laughs> that, but I think it's still pretty cool. And I think occasionally you may need to name drop on there. It's, it's, if, especially if it's been written in a paper and our listeners are listening, I think they want to kind of know who you're having well, lunch with. Yeah, but by the time this airs, it will. Happen. It will. So correct. This was the day that Phil Rosenthal from Somebody Feed Phil, he came back to town to do a book signing that everybody yep. is now aware of because 600 people showed up. Let's try um, this. But he had to be there by a certain time. He was staying where he was staying. He had X amount of time. He said, we have to have lunch. So I said, okay, we'll have lunch. And then I was like, this will be easy. It'll be lunch. And then I realized that he wanted to have lunch late. And like every place that, I, that was convenient to where it needed to be convenient, close to where he was going. You know, yeah. there was a lot of requirements. And while I was sitting here tossing it around, I was like, wait, that place is close. That place is close. Wait a minute. Didn't I just read that Sato opened back up for lunch? They'd be perfect. That's only like maybe 10, 15 minutes from where he's going to need to be. Let me see. And so it worked out and we went to lunch at Sato. And of course, I told them that we were coming um, because he was on a time constraint. He had a, a very specific amount of time to eat. So, and they were wonderful, of course, but it just made me think, no, you know, they had only just reopened for lunch. They hadn't been open for lunch since before the pandemic. And I hadn't written about Sato, even though, you know, Good Salt's been in the news and different. I hadn't personally written about Sato 
pretty much in my entire time at the Sentinel. Wow. And um, certainly not since Hui Tin was the executive chef. He's been there for like 12 years, though. So like the last time I wrote about them, he was probably like an assistant sous chef or something. It was like in the way, way back. But the point was that the lunch was incredible. And it made me think I should come back for dinner when, you know, so I can just hang out, chill and taste some of the dinner food. And uh, so I went back for dinner. It was, again, it was just, it was such a good meal. I can't even. And so I was like, you know, people are always signing up to Let's Eat Orlando and saying, I'm new in town. What's good for this? I just moved here. I'm moving here. I'm coming to the area. And I was like, you know what? Maybe in our circle, yours, mine, the foodies, people, everybody's like Sado. Everybody knows about Sado. But the real thing is we're all like kind of up our own butts. Like, no, people aren't like us. Not everybody is like us. They don't. It's not restaurants and food every five seconds with normal yeah. people. <laughs> so yeah. I felt like there were a lot of people who could benefit, as could Sado from them learning about this place. Yeah, no, and I think that's something that is, and, I, and I, I'm and i glad we're having this conversation for a few reasons. One, obviously, I like that we name drop other, uh, a whole bunch of different restaurants, and that's what the idea of the show notes will be so that people can go to them. But I also like the fact that they're, you know, I, I also kind of think it's kind of cool because people can kind of get a little bit of better, a better idea of what you go through. Uh, in the sense of like fee, you know, like, Hey, how come, how come she hasn't written about this or how come she hasn't? And it's because like, Hey, you're basically going and trying to eat different places. So sometimes it's not one of those things where it's always, uh, always, you can always kind of like, you know, Hey, I'm going to talk about this person. Oh, but you already talked about them like about a year ago, unless something's changed or something's new or something newsworthy is happening. You're basically constantly trying, and that's the beauty of you know the paper. It fits. I mean, a lot of times people yeah. will fit, and and there are news stories that need sources that of people who own restaurants, run restaurants, run bars, whatever. So I'm I'm talking about a given place, but in a different context. Yeah. It's a news story about this, or you know, a food story about that, and it's not so. The same. Let's uh, since we since you dropped since you, you since you obviously had lunch and dinner at Sado, mm -hmm. can you tell us what you uh, I'm kind of curious, like if I haven't if I haven't been there, what uh, would do you what do you recommend? Like what's your like, oh, man, like this is so good. Do you have anything that you like well, that you really enjoyed? Yeah, 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 I'll start with something that's been there for a while, but I had the pleasure of just looking at it. it it's called Korean Chirashi, which is like. I guess it was inspired, you know, it's a raw fish and salad like they, that they, you know, toss with a nice dressing and they serve it with miso soup and I think a little bit of rice and these sheets of nori, seaweed. Okay. And it is just, first of all, it's just beautiful. It just looks like treasure. It looks like the colors in the fish are just, it looks like jewels. Um. And then, you know, Phil was eating it and he said, he was like, I wish I could put everything in seaweed. You know, he's, I think he and I get along because we're both like so ridiculously enthusiastic <laughs> when we taste something that we like. Um, and that's kind of how I feel every time I eat something really good. And then when I came back for dinner, oh my God, um, the salt and pepper beef ribs were ridiculous. Like these, they're like, they're, he fries them. So they like have a little crust on them mm, and they're deep fried. Yeah. And they just, they're incredible. They're, you know. Where do they, where, these, do, where do they serve it with? Uh, oh, like a hoisin sauce. And I don't really remember that much about the condiment because they were good with yeah. nothing. Yeah. Um, you know me, I'm like, I'm not, I like sauces, but I'm not, I'm more about like the dish, but Wow, what an incredible dish. And he calls um he calls it his childhood dish because all of the flavors are pho inspired. Nice. You know, from when he used to his parents would make pho and they would boil the bones for a really long time and they would give him the bones when they took them out of the soup to gnaw on and he would dunk them in all of the pho, like the hoisin sauce and the uh sriracha and that kind of so it's 
that's what it was inspired by. That's awesome. Yeah, I love I love stuff like that. I almost sometimes wish I almost sometimes wish restaurants had um almost like a backstory so you can almost like hear see some of those things. Like you know what I mean? Like when you look at a menu and you can kind of hear like see the backstory of the menu, like if you really wanted to, if you're looking at it and you could be like, Oh, here's the story of how this came out or how I bought how this got on the di- on the menu. Um, I always think that'd be kind of fun to do like a QR code or something. So that way, as you're waiting for them, I mean, and maybe who knows, maybe a restaurant will do this. You can like scan the, the menu and be like, Hey, find out more about how these dishes came about, came to be. It would be cool. I, on the one hand sounds cool. On the other hand, it's like, wait, do I really want to look at my phone more? You True. Know, like, am I eating by myself? Then True. Maybe. Yeah. But if I'm eating with you, then I don't want to be staring at my phone. No, no, no. I get that. No, I totally get that. But I do think that'd be kind of a fun thing to be able to just kind of to be able to watch or even heck, even on social as a social media content to figure out why or how or or what came up, because those are the best stories. So other outstanding things there, the hamachi collar. I love the fish collar. If I see a collar on the menu, I usually order it. Outstanding. And there was a roll that we had called the Royale. Uh, it's like a $30 roll, so it's kind of Mac, but it is uh, a Negitoro Hosomaki, which is like more of a taller, slender roll. Okay. So that's like, and so it's kind of elegant with the, you know, minced tuna and scallion. And then it has like a draped piece of Chutoro tuna over it and then caviar and then gold. Edible gold. Okay, for thirty bucks, I can see that. It That's looks, I would expect those things. Badass, but yeah. it is so good. It's that good. So that was that was like the money roll right there. That's awesome. That's awesome. So would you would you say that going to Sato? Would you say would be something for celeb like if you're celebration or even like for lunch? It's just good to go for lunch. Yes if, and yes and yes. Yeah. Just, yeah, that's and, what you know, I thought. Just good food. Go there. It's not like everything there is, you know, a thirty dollar roll. You don't Correct. have to go there, and they have lunch specials where you can get, um, you can actually get that collar as a lunchbox special. I can't remember what's in it, but that's available at lunch, which is like super decadent for lunch. I would go for the, uh, the tossed um, chirashi, but uh, it was just a fabulous experience, but moreover, what I would want to talk to, and yeah. this is something I feel like you relate to because people are like, but I know about that already. Yeah. Like, and you're a businessman. Yeah. So I know you appreciate your regular customers very, very much, but don't you want new ones? <laughs> yeah. I think, I think there's like a, so it's funny cause I started thinking about this because sometimes, um, you need, yes, I would think if I had to say, you know, like, Hey, we're like, I want to sell this many shirts and how, like, I don't know, we'll use a, a basic example. If I had five shirts, if I wanted to sell five shirts to five, either five different people or one to one super fan, I definitely would want, obviously I would like some regulars to buy more new product or continue buying product, but I also want new people to come in and see me. So you obviously want a mix of your regulars, but then you also want those new people because those new people usually what happens is those new people are the ones that talk. Um, a lot of times people won't go to like the place that they usually go to and then just rant it. I mean, I do, but they don't usually rant and rave about, Oh, I went to so-and-so place. You know what I mean? Like, and had this, they don't usually do that. Um, and you know, unless you're a foodie and you're posting where you're eating all the time. Um, so yeah, I definitely want the new customer to come. I think, and especially since, they say it takes like it's the power of seven. They say sometimes that someone needs to see something seven times or hear something seven times before they actually will either think about trying it or trying it unless you obviously, you know, or unless someone else is kind of influencing them uh, and telling them, hey, this is great. You should definitely do this. And they'd be like, oh, OK, yeah, I will. I will do this. I used to um, work for a magazine for the nightclub industry. And I remember one of the club owners that I interviewed said he calls it the rule. There's another rule. He called it the rule of 10. Okay. which is one person comes into your establishment. They're telling 10 people about it. So you better make sure they had a good time because otherwise 10 people are going to hear that same complaint. You know, so you want to make sure. 
And so uh, you get somebody who comes and buys a hat or a shirt, loves the packaging, loves the product. Yep. They're going to tell 10 people, hey, and then they'll also wear your shirt, which is also nice. Or whoever that, they bought it for is going to wear the, your shirt. That is definitely the key. The other part, though, is, and I will say, and I'm very, I'd be very curious if you ever have restaurants talk to you about this. Like, you could have, like, it's amazing how there's that. It's very easy. The The switch turns on very quickly. You have a bad experience, too long of a wait, regardless of what it is. Oh, very quick, brutal, brutal, very quick, to, like. very quick to go and like, you know, and destroy. But you have an amazing time. Have a have a, have like, wow, like I every time I come here, it's amazing. And no one says anything. It's yeah, like no, it's like the people. weirdest thing. Yeah. Um, and it's so hard because. They say they even say that sometimes and I forget the statistical number of it is, but like for like for every negative, you almost need like two to three times more positive to out to like, you know, it's almost like the negative always circumvents and it makes it. So, yeah, I mean, I definitely would always rather have the new customer, the customer that always is, uh, you know, ranting and raving. I mean, I can talk to them blue in the face telling my customers, hey, post pictures of you wearing the shirt or you doing this. And if and a majority of the time they probably won't, uh, they won't do it. Um, you know, which is the crazy part about it. Same thing when you're having an amazing meal, you want someone to take a picture of it and you know and show it off and tag them and be like, hey, look at this amazing place I ate at. Uh, check it out. I, it's a walking advertisement. You know what I mean? Like in the case of the posting, yes. I remember one time I was wearing my Biggie Bread cap. It was like six in the morning. I was like the first appointment at the car you know, the mechanics to get yeah. just like an oil change and everything. It was still dark out. And the guy who was my service manager, <clears throat> not into sandwiches. I mean, probably everybody's into sandwiches, but he is a hat guy. He loves ball caps. I mean, he was like, where'd you get that hat? And I told him all about you. And by the time my car was done, he was like, dude, I ordered two of them. I got one for me and one for my nephew. So yeah. it was just me wearing the hat. He wasn't even, it, he just liked the look of it. He had no idea what the logo was. Yep. He just liked it. Wanted yep. it. No. And, and I think, I think it's so important. And I think the, all those things play factors. And when you, especially like for restaurants, everything from the ambiance that you're going into, how it looks. I mean, there's a lot of things that you're dealing with. I don't even know how re, like chefs and restaurateurs like deal with that. Because they're they're they gotta have their their finger on the pulse on everything, you know. Was there trash outside my place? Was it the inside of it when you go in? You know, you know what I mean. Like everything. It's so hard. Everything. I would, would, don't get me wrong. I think that people need to run their business very well. I don't want to make it, but like people are really like I do feel like that. You know, it's like you said. The the hate gets more. Always. You know, it gets more fuel. You know. Than yeah. the, uh, than the love. I think, and that's always the difficult part is when you deal with that as a restaurant. Um, and I also think the other part of it is, and we've talked about it on previous episodes when you brought up the whole idea of hall of fame, like sometimes you don't want to get overlooked either in the sense that you've been like in the foodie awards where you're like, Hey, this place has been open forever and they've always been good. But then you tend to, for you sometimes kind of forget about them because there's so many new places always opening up mm -hmm. and everything else. So it's always difficult. I, I'd be kind of curious, like if you, in your world, like, do you have like a note section on your phone of like all new places you always want to check out or try I have or notes on my phone? I have notes in a spiral notebook. I have a whiteboard at my office, you know, dry erase, a giant dry erase board with a running list that I'm always adding to always taking away from. And the sad part is there have been a couple of places in the years that I've worked here that have closed before I even got a chance to go. Yeah. Um, Cause I just don't, you know, sometimes I have, I, I think, oh, I'm going to be in Kissimmee. There's that place that I wanted to go and I'll try and be strategic about it. But then all of a sudden some news happens and I have to write that. So all of a sudden my trip to Kissimmee gets canceled. Oh, well, that place is going to have to wait until the next time I can either make a pointed trip or something else comes down there. Um, I try to mix it up, though. I try to run around. I, I ran around the metro a little bit this weekend. So we'll be we'll be some you know all around do you ever do you ever go the route of saying i'm gonna do like a, like i'm gonna do i'm gonna spend the day at this one place and eat at like three places like in one like a different part of town or something like I that or in orlando did that this week and i didn't i hit two places in one part of town and then one place in another um okay one of them was a bust 
it happens. Um, you know, it happens. Actually, when you, that up. <laughs> no, I, I want to, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> curious about this and well, you don't and we're, like, what was the bus? What was the no, bus? No, there's no, we won't talk about the busts, but yeah. my question is this. When it wasn't the, terrible or anything, I just wouldn't go yeah. out of my window. Okay. Right. So then, so then that's the thing. Like there's obviously you have a, a land of demarcation of like, okay, where of, of like, okay, newsworthy for me to write about and then, or mm, maybe not. And it's better for me not to write um, or heck, even just you eating in general, uh, you know, forget about the fact of, you know, what I recommend to a friend or not recommend to a friend. Cause I mean, obviously you have a, uh, you have more, more power than, than, you know, you have more influence than some, but in, in my case, like same thing, like if I've eaten at a I bad a place, big megaphone, it's not even as big as Correct. other as some other people's, but I have, you know, I, I yeah. do. And I, and I want, I, I only want to use that for good as you should. Yeah. I and I'm the same way. I don't, I don't usually tend to, uh, tell people places I don't like to eat at. I'd rather tell you places that we want to eat at, which is exactly. kind of what our show is going to be about most of the time. We're plenty never going to, we'll never talk about the bad I, places. Yeah. Plenty, plenty of people like the places that I may not have cared for that much. Yeah. You know, um, and they'll keep going and they'll keep telling their friends. Yeah. Know? No, I, I totally agree with that. Do you think that, I'm trying to think of like when you when you're trying to figure out all the places that you're going to and doing. I mean, it I just think after a while, like you you're also gotta be sometimes there's gotta be times where like I'm not in the mood to eat this. Oh I God. wanna eat something else. I don't or, know. I have moments where I'm like, Do I even have to eat? Like Oh yeah, that's the other part. I get food fatigue, believe it or not. It passes relatively quickly because I like to eat. But yeah, there are yeah. some weeks where I'm just like, Can I just I just want to go make a shake, <laughs> like a protein shake or something. I mean, and sometimes that's how you probably probably start your day. Be like, I'm going to start with this because I'm going to go be eating or I'm going to have to eat something oh, later on. Yes. I am. Um, I recently started uh, just a few months ago with a calorie app that I track now more than I did in recent. Um, and yes, I 100% plan. Yeah. My you kind of have to. I mean, I can, I can only imagine. <laughs> with as much eating out now and with that being said let's just i'm kind of curious because of the fact that you eat out so much does a lot of times those foods that you have like obviously you're eating and you're taking pictures and you're doing things like that do some of those then become leftovers that you then later on eat for for yeah. dinner or something like sure. that because I mean, you're I'm like there's just so much food right 100 percent. yeah i take my leftovers home there's no there's no way i could I, i'm not gonna leave you know, because I, I try to watch that I don't eat too much and, yeah. you know, in one sitting and people love their portions here. You know, I laugh because what at the Italian sandwich place, right? Mm -hmm. They in Italy, those sandwiches usually just have like a slice or two of prosciutto or something in them. But the the couple who started it knew enough that they were like, Americans are going to want something bigger than that. We're not going to make it crazy because we want to keep it in the realm of what these sandwiches are, but they stuff the sandwiches with enough that it's still not humongous, but the sandwiches are all like seven, eight bucks with home, with fresh baked bread and the meat sliced to order. And so unless you're somebody who just refuses to have a lunch that isn't a thousand calories, you yeah. know? Which don't, don't forget these sandwiches are still stuffed with cream and cheese and meat. So, like there's a lot. Where's, of where's the sandwich? You didn't give us the name. What's the oh, name? Well, of we it? talked about it already. Esperazione. We actually have not. We talked about it maybe briefly, but oh, I for at least about it. for no, no, for this, we've talked oh, about it enough, maybe offline. Oh, okay. uh, but yes. So yes. This, this Italian like restaurant Nocoe, and they make Nocoe. Italian sandwiches with Tigelle, which is a, uh, it's also called crescentine. It's a it's a round bread, depending on where in Italy you're from. Both names are the same. They call it tigelle. They bake it right there. Um, they're these beautiful little round breads, almost like pita-esque. Okay. Because you slice it. It's pretty thin. You slice it, and then you stuff it. And it's almost, it's a little, it's thin. It's a little crispy on the outside, a little chewy on the inside. It's not a lot of bread. And then they put the fillings in, which is sliced meats, burrata, 
uh, different cheeses. They make house-made creams, little arugula, little sun-dried tomato, depending. Beautiful, beautiful sandwiches. Beautiful sandwiches. That that sounds delicious. It also sounds like it's like you said, not not so much where you're like stuffed. It's like uh, you know, hits the you, spot. You could get two of them, but they yeah. also have dessert. You might want to have some. Yeah. You know, Share they the make yeah. they make the cannoli. They make the tiramisu, which was great, by the way. Really, really nice and a big serving. Like it's definitely something that you should share. Um. If you're going to get it or don't eat it all at once and take some well, home. Out of curiosity, what sandwich did you get? What was the meats in your sandwich? I tasted three. Okay. And I can't remember off the top of my head. Mine is there one that you would, like, if I were to say, hey, I'm going there, what would you say? Like, go have, is there one you'd be like, Biggie, you'd well, enjoy I this? I love the pistachio cream. So okay. anything that has that in it would be great. But really... You know, it's all a different variation of like kind of the same things. They have ones with no meat, and just cheese. And, you know, they, they have, I don't know, there's probably like 12, 15 that, they're, that are, you know, they've pre-designed for you. Yeah. And you can just pick them and they're delicious. And it's funny because you could get two, I guess, if you wanted to, and it would be like 14 bucks, which is, there's sandwiches that cost more than that yeah. for one. Yeah. Um, and then you could try them. They're not, they're, because they're small and the, smaller and delicate, when I say they're like, they fit like this, you're not going to want to cut them. So if you're going to share them with people, share them with people that you will, that you don't mind passing. You share bites for. with. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. Gotcha. No, um, I love They're really that. good. And um, they don't, no, they don't have French fries. <laughs> no, they don't have potato chips. It's a very European, you know, Italian style. They serve it the way they love it in italy so is there a side at all like could i get like a like a sal like a pasta salad or a salad they have with it it's like that you can get that are you know larger which i think is cool where you can kind of mix and match because basically everything you know a good portion of the stuff that they're putting in there it's almost like antipasti yeah. you know like people people oh charcuterie board and then you get your italian grandpa and he's like charcuterie you know, he's like, what? It's salami and olives. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, we're putting that in it. We're putting that in this bread is what yeah. we're doing for you. So, so yeah. So it's not like that. Eat the sandwiches. The bread is just excellent. And they also do a sweet version too, where you can get um, like fresh strawberry preserves that they make in there. Oh, that um, things good. like that. So you can do that. And that's also very traditional. They do that as well um, in Italy. Do, are they, Obviously, like, are the is the is it served like the bread warm or is it everything kind of co like cold? Just like well, the, the meats bread are sliced is warm when you get it or okay. when they get it, but it's very thin bread. Yeah. So it gets cool fast, but it's very very fresh. Nice. You know, it's not going to be cold. It's it's fresh. They're making it right there. It doesn't take very long to bake these things. They're little. Yeah. Um, in fact, I I um watched a bunch of grandmas make them after I learned about them. I watched some videos, you know, of grandmas in Italy. They have like a stove top version. I was like, Oh, I want one of those. You know, it's like kind of this, it's this metal press that you can put on your stove and the heat goes up into the metal press and you can make them right on the stove top, like six at once, five or oh, six wow. at once. Boom. And then you spread like lardo in there, garlic, parmesan. That's how they eat it there. Oh, that's exactly how I would want to eat yeah. it. I could Piece definitely. Of cheese. Yeah, that was just that's all I would eat. I don't even know if I'd put. <laughs> I'd just yeah. be like, just give me the bread with the with all that stuff on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so go there, check that out. Sandwiches, you have to go. Yeah, I yeah, I will. I will give it a try. I will give it a try. I will also, uh, if you have not. Obviously, like we talked about Sados, make sure you definitely go check them out. Um, you will definitely see all these in the show notes, all the different places um, that we talked about um, and all our episodes. And uh, definitely make sure to subscribe. Make sure to tell your friends. Um, definitely Give us some keep... feedback. We can take it. Yeah, what please. You hear about. What you want to hear about, certain topics you want us to discuss, places you want us to you know, check out uh, or eat. Or, you know, or maybe even a food topic. Like I love to, I always love to kind of get, I always love to hear Amy Drew's perspective on some of these things just because she sees, I, I kind of look at it as even though I like going behind the veil or I guess like kind of like the Wizard of Oz going behind the curtain and hearing a little bit more of some of the things that you have to deal with because like there, I don't think a lot of people understand that part of it and 
I want people to be able to appreciate it because you're you what you do is exactly what almost every major city, you know, food columnist does and has to write about. And and I think it's something that, uh, you know, people have to understand and realize that, you know, it's a it's a hard job, uh, you know, being the you know, trying to share and give a, a different perspective for everyone to be able to enjoy different f- meal, foods and meals. You're very kind. <laughs> well, that's our show. Amy Drew, always a pleasure. And, uh, and you know, You're my definitely. Favorite. Next time I want to talk um, about maybe condiments or something. Okay. I want to I get Biggie's take on, you know, sandwich philosophy. I, I want to talk about, I, hey, I'm all about talking sandwich philosophy. I'm also talking, I'm also interested in i i would be interested in talking about different areas of food construction or weird food combos um i don't i have a friend that uh i want to i have a friend of mine who uh does like a instagram reels and we'll talk about it i'll I'll send you some so we can kind of chat because some of the interesting flavor profiles that she does um because her listeners send her or followers send her stuff uh and i'm always intrigued by like what do you think matches and doesn't match? Uh, so we should definitely talk about that as well. I would love that. Okay. Well, perfect. Well, that's our show. Thank you so much for everyone for checking us out. Um, definitely subscribe and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Later. Bye.